you reckon? Too soon? Ah, f So another month has passed. I'm sat here in my Biofresh probiotic face mask and I have a really good vlog for you this month. There is very deep chats, some hauls, a trip to Canada, and a wedding venue revisit and lots and lots of food, Halloween stuff and a Stephen King movie premiere and a hotel getaway and lots and lots of fun coming but uh, I just wanted to start the video by thanking you for voting for me for uh, this here we award uh, best lifestyle influencer very cool. I didn't vlog at the awards because I honestly didn't think that I'd win one. I do my best to be real and honest with you um, about my lifestyle and I'm just trying to enjoy each day um, one day at a time, you know what I mean? And I'm not really about putting out that kind of aspirational bullshit, which is what I like to call it. I, I just like sharing and connecting with you through this little screen. So thanks for that award and where's it gone? Book of the month for our monthly vlog book club is going to be The Handmaid's Tale, a dystopian where women are property of the state and the show of this is so fucked up. I love it. I love the show so much so I'm really excited to start that. And then I have a little something to ask of you guys. So I've been invited to be part of the Team Trees collaboration. It's just this massive YouTuber collaboration where we're trying to do our bit and use our platforms for good to plant 20 million trees and as of the time I'm recording this video I think 12 million trees have been planted or like the money has been donated for them to be planted. For every dollar donated a tree will be planted. I'm going to donate 300 euro and like if every person watching this video donated like a dollar that would be 50,000 trees. Can you imagine our little internet family doing that? It would be so cool and then if you all told one other person we double that number. That'd be really pretty epic. Uh, I don't think we have to save the planet. I think we have to save ourselves because the planet's gonna be fine. The planet has survived far worse than humans. Um, we're the ones that are gonna suffer if we don't kind of all pull together. So the uh, link for that is down below if you'd like to do that at any point today. And intro done, that means it it's vlog time. Uh, I hope you enjoy and thumbs up if you do. And I'll leave yous alone to what? Good morning on this beautifully gloomy day. Um, got a new monthly vlog for you and uh, I wanna have a bit of a chat. It's an important one, so I'm gonna sit you on a very important book. This is The Secret Garden, which has been really inspiring me while I write my second novel. Well, I've not started writing yet. I'm in the planning stages, which takes a long time. And as I chat to you, I'm gonna massage my face with, with this contraption. Unusually for me, it's not a sex toy. It's, um, it's from the body shop for massaging your face and it's really refreshing. These balls are really cold. <laughs> These balls are nice and cold and refreshing. And I'm gonna use some uh, tan organic uh, facial serum which has like natural oils and stuff in it. I'm just gonna use it to massage these in. I'm sure if you use social media, you have noticed uh, lately that there are a lot of opinions out there. There are a lot of different types of people out there. And something I've been thinking about a lot is the fact that historically like we wouldn't have been exposed to that many people in our entire lifetimes let alone in a morning you know before we get out of bed we've seen a hundred opinions on some politically charged issue and a lot of people like me are feeling very politically confused because sometimes i'll read one thing and i'll be like oh yeah that's correct everyone who doesn't think that is is an idiot and then I'll just stop myself because, you know, I'll see someone else's opinion on the other end of it and be like, well, wait a minute, they have a point too. Um, and then I feel so afraid to say what I think in that moment because I'm so afraid of backlash. I'm so afraid of being attacked. I don't like that aspect of the world right now, you know. We're all living in a prison and I feel like there's one of two ways that I and like everyone else kind of can go. It's like there's this fork in the road right now. I feel like this is all gonna sound quite hippy dippy and wishy-washy and stuff, but just hear me out. I have radically changed my experience of life recently. Those of you who have read my first book know that I am a big believer in the law of attraction. And it's it's scientifically backed up now that optimism impacts your reality. It, it just does. It changes how you feel and therefore what you do and how you go about 
this life this life that we're all just experiencing you know i i genuinely uh, oh that's so good i believe we're all just energy and that everything is interconnected and you know you can believe what you like um i i don't really believe in like the kind of higher power like god in, in a catholic sense like i don't think of god as this being that kind of dictates everything and stuff but i do think that everything that exists is part of everything else and each of us is everything that has ever existed ever will exist and i just love going off on tangents don't i no <laughs> i i'm a big believer in energies law of attraction and all that stuff and i i think like every day i am making a choice to put out love and to be a person of love rather than to be afraid and angry and to um to just to hate people who disagree with me or to hate people who are full of hate themselves and um i'm not naturally wired that way so it's it's a choice that i i have to make every day to kind of focus on things that fill me with love and i'm not talking about like romantic love like what i have for thomas where i'm like oh yeah get your kit off i'm not even talking about the kind of love i have for my family or for my cats or anything like that um just like the kind of unconditional feeling of love to just look at someone else and to just love them because they exist like without condition and to put out that feeling it's like a frequency and i i definitely think i operate at a higher frequency than where i used to operate i think i used to be um quite low frequencies uh see I, I read a lot about all this kind of stuff but essentially like i allowed um my fears my anxieties my my sadness my uh experience of depression because I, a lot of bad things happened to me when i was younger when i was a teenager and i kind of chose to keep thinking the same thoughts keep spending time with the same people who would hurt me um i i was making decisions that were keeping me in a very low state of being and um there was very little happiness very little joy very little um anything and i get so happy over the littlest things and i i am so grateful for the littlest things like if someone makes me a cup of tea i'll just sit there and i'll be just putting out these waves and waves of gratitude and i feel like ever since i kind of started thinking that way about life i attract similar minded people into my life there is a reason i'm talking about all of this i think my experiences of social media have improved greatly because i now make a lot of choices now i'm not perfect but i make a lot of choices to avoid bringing all of that unnecessary noise into my life and i just try and focus on things i like on content that i like on people that i like and um, that i love and i mean this is serious business sometimes i write out tweets and then I'll think, what am I doing? This is me adding to the noise. I'm going to delete this. And I, I often I often do that. I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm trying to open up about this because I'm, I know that like it's, it's a day-to-day -day decision that I have to remake every day, if that makes sense. There is way too fucking much of people putting other people into boxes based on their skin color, based on their weight or what they think about their weight, based on their gender, based on their sexuality. Like, you know, I I don't understand this like boxing in of people and the division that all these things cause every day. In the past when I've talked about something, say, you know, bisexuality, I'm talking about that so as to raise awareness and be an example for other people who are feeling like that but don't quite know how to communicate um, how they're feeling to others in their lives and on the one hand i do think a lot of that kind of work that i have done in the past is quite important but then on the other i i just don't want to contribute to like people identifying their entire being as as this label as this word because we're all so much more than that you know like we are so much more than that your sexuality isn't your personality like your personality isn't your gender and where you're from has nothing to do with like who you are how you treat people what you stand for um and i oh i'm i'm, I'm very i'm getting very deep do you ever have these days like i just wanted to squirt some of the stuff that goes on in my brain into this vlog uh to let you know that i don't know i i feel and think a whole lot more um than just about oh 
here's some new clothes I got. But I think we should swiftly move on. Do let me know if you'd like more deep spiritual chats with Mel. Uh, anyway, let's chill the tits. Let's take it down a notch. And uh, I'll, I'll try on some of my new workout outfits and tell you where I got them from because I got these three new workout outfits because I've been going to the gym really regularly. I got uh, Caroline O'Mahony's fit plan. She's another Irish gal who is super into her weights and she is in incredible shape. I know I'll never uh, have the level of dedication that that woman has to the physique but um, I find her dedication and her passion very inspiring because she's really all about teaching us gals how to how to lift and it's it's always kind of been a real man thing to do you know going to the weight section and pump some iron that's something that benefits women so massively our hormones our everything it like strengthens our bones and our joints for our old age like it's so important and it's so beneficial for us and there's not many women out there really speaking about it so yeah she gives some great advice her plan revolves around really basic moves and it's kind of she's all about like really nailing your form and mastering mind muscle connection uh i need to do a whole video about everything i've learned since i started lifting weights two years ago because a lot of you've been commenting recently noticing the physical payoff of lifting weights the thing is most of the payoff is mental most of the payoff is is inside and uh how i feel after it you know anyway i'm gonna try these on tell you where they're from Right, so I've dried the hair and I definitely think this set, um, this is from Victoria's Secret. This is the cutie cutiest, cutest and sexiest little set that I got. It has pockets for the phone, which is so helpful when we go in there. And uh, it has flowers all over. It does reveal quite a bit of boobage, but I feel very cute going to the gym in this ghetto. I feel a lot better about supporting Victoria's Secret because um, they recently finally decided to include a model who is a little bit more average sized and uh, I don't know I think it's important that people like me support brands that cater for people like me and uh, I'm a size UK UK size 12 and yeah I obviously want to buy from brands who kind of make their products seeing people like me using them rather than just the one percent of the human race that looks like Victoria's Secret models and um, this next set is from girlfriend collective and these are a great sustainable option and as you know i am i am doing my absolute best to rewear a lot to buy from more sustainable brands and to go to charity shops and that but i could not find gym gear in charity shops so uh i did manage to get this very lovely moss green um set from girlfriend collective and these are like compressive so they do hold in in and around your tummy area and i've put these all to the test in the gym i'll show you those on now and then also my sweaty betty ones which i'm gonna wear today to the gym and sweaty betty have started making gym wear out of recycled plastic bottles apparently which is so cool <laughs> make a rich chocolate uh, vegan protein drink now and go and smash a workout because that is how I put out love for my body and that's how I feel like I operate as my best self in this crazy world and then tomorrow I'm going off to Canada to screen my first mini documentary with Thomas and I Bilbo are we going to Canada October. October. We're being very good. We're all dressed to go gymming in the hotel. We have some very jazzy outfits to wear. You mainly. They've probably seen a lot of my jazzy outfits. I'm wearing the couple of um remember the dresses that I got from Reformation that I had in the hall recently. So there's this one and this one I'll be wearing, but I also have this very epic little Ted Baker dress and then Thomas has some very saucy numbers here. Yeah, I got my, my dicky. Look this at dicky. this, a little green dicky. Last night we went exploring the neighborhood and I found these jellies 
it's like Halloween sour jellies, but I had a couple of those when I woke up before my breakfast. Back from the gym and I'm using my Hannes Dottir sea mask. This is so nice and minty, but it looks like snots. So many minerals to make my skin glowing. Me and Thomas cannot get over the friendliness of Canadian people. And last night we went to this place called Spaghetti Factory for our dinner and the guy was hilarious. Hey sir, hey ma'am, would you care for some more Parmesan cheese? He was just so enthusiastic and it was amazing. And I gave him a 33% tip. I'm all ready for my premiere now. I feel very lovely. I'm wearing these kind of square toe black little shoes with heels from and other stories. My reformation dress accompanied with a lovely makeup stain, which was just always gonna happen because it's fucking me. This is the little necklace I had made out of my mom's old engagement ring that matches my engagement ring. And I got a nice messy blow dry. My hair is really massive. Oh, hi there. <laughs> oh, I really you. like this Can new um... burgundy shoes, burgundy pants. Gryffindor man. Uh, I'm a Ravenclaw. You're not a Ravenclaw. The test was wrong. I just love the slit. It's real sexy. Sex Anytime if I want to be sexy, I just go, just leg. pop my leg out. Yeah, leg. Do that to like hail a, hail a cab. Hey, what's up, man? I need a cab. I'm taking my fluffiest of fluffy green coats. Look at how snuggly this is. Yeah, it's like being in bed except upright. we like to look when we shop for adapters. Right. People keep staring because we're so overdressed. A lot of places here do these Beyond Meat burgers and don't they taste so like meat? It's mental. Yeah, it's really confused. It's making me really like, I don't know. It just feels weird. You haven't eaten meat in how many years? Like nearly 12 because it obviously doesn't taste exactly like me but because I haven't eaten it in so long to me it does you know? yeah. We're just in some random food court and it has absolutely everything and it feels like there's plenty of these in this mall This place is like a city Oh this is amazing, it tastes so good I think this is baby kale It's really easy to eat um, And there's this cashew cream sauce in it that is just making it so tasty Look what he did Oh no, don't show them. <laughs> Who's excited for the first screening of Buffer 2019? Woo! Um, she died in January at the age of 104. Um, as you can see, she was an absolute legend. Or when we allow it to take time away from relationships that make our lives meaningful. You know, you're seeing headlines being like, you know, all the children are doomed and then, you know, our jobs are so heavy on social media. So it is something I'm kind of constantly thinking about. Am I ever kind of sacrificing real life experiences for a phone, like a device that has no pulse? Good morning from the hotel coffee station. I have um, lovely cup of joe. We're off now to an, a park called uh, Ireland Park Hello. to watch the sunrise. Um, Sun didn't rise. <laughs> it's lashing rain. I'm so angry. <laughs> this is like my big romantic idea. It's like, we're going there and watch the sunrise, a beautiful skyline, and it's pissing rain. I think it's lovely. Oh, yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We don't have buildings like this in Ireland. Everything is really flat in Ireland. That's one thing everyone comments about when they visit, how all the houses and all the buildings are really, really low to the ground. So they build outward instead of upward, which is just really not good <laughs> for because then everyone has to commute to work and it just causes chocker block traffic. It's fucking stupid.
We did it, my friends. We got poutine, which is cheese curds, gravy, and chips. And it is fucking delicious. This is why I agreed to do Buffer Festival. It's all right. <laughs> this is the gayest section of this room. We've got all of the gay. You do look like Ricky Martin today. I'm digging it. Especially like your ass looks really great in those. Uh... <laughs> What's this shit? Look at her go! Look at her go! That's amazing. The internet needed to see that. It did. Thank you so much. Look at this like her. Subscribe. <laughs> I want a partner. Yes, like a partner. A partner. Hello, I'm looking for a partner. Yeah, like ring ring. Have you met my partner? <laughs> right, so you need us to, to understand emotions. You cannot possibly comprehend the depths of my sadness. <laughs> Sorry, okay. <laughs> Give us a round uh, because... Emma Stone. Or Andrew Garfield. <laughs> in any order. <laughs> Sexually. <laughs> and be pretty fucking thrilled about it. I it. Uh, it's the same thing! Yeah. Can't you guys see? Like, this is this guy, it's just so frustrating. How does he get away with it? How... What? Where's that coming from? Where's that coming from? I don't... Oh, what? Hello? Huh? Hello? Oh, hey, hey! Hey, John. Hi, John. Yeah. When we got back from Canada, myself and Thomas took his mammy to go and see our wedding venue because she hadn't seen it yet and we wanted to get a better look at the premises. So basically, Ballybeg is one of those places where you have real intimate and unique weddings and they let you have it over a three day period if you want to. So we actually have a ceremony room, the houses, the grounds, everything for four nights. And so we, what we needed to do was have a look at all of the bedrooms and just figure out which family members are going to stay in which room and all that kind of stuff but even just to get a bit more of a feel for the place um because i'm not sure we'll actually get to see it again before we're getting married um we're getting married next year and you know i have said like i'm not going to share the date with you guys or anything like that and i'm also not too sure if i'll still be monthly vlogging uh next year i just i don't know about keeping them up like i don't know Ooh, anyway so yeah i wanted to have some snapshots of the full place um because we did vlog the venue back when we went to see it but uh this is just something for me mainly to look back on because i treat these vlogs like old picture books um and they're just so fun to look back on Hello, so we're wandering around Tesco. We've just spent the past two hours with a very small baby. A baby? A little baby. Broodiness is going through the roof. We're gonna go shopping. <laughs> That'll distract me. <laughs> Some food. Shopping for baby clothes. <laughs> no, we're going shopping for food. So I'm gonna bring you around food shopping. I'm gonna get bits. And the way Thomas and I kind of do our shopping, because we take turns in each other's houses, you get your stuff and I get my stuff. Yeah. But we kind of share some of the dinner things. Yeah. I, think. Uh, I do a list and I get exactly what I need and you walk around and just pick things. I pick whatever looks good in the moment. He's brilliant with that though for shopping. He always has lists and I... Um, lists are the key. I have lists for everything. Yeah. Because you don't go, wise. ooh, I need a candle. No, it's not on the list. I you do don't need, need a candle. A candle. <laughs> I need this candle. No, you don't. Pumpkin chai latte candle. <laughs> it's it's eighteen twenty five. <laughs> so for fruit, I have lemons for lemon water, bananas and strawberries for putting in with my breakfast, some yogurt and kiwis. What really frustrates me is I don't know how to get fruit like this without plastic. So if anyone has any tips on where sells like berries and stuff without plastic definitely comment below same thing with veg like look so much of it is just wrapped up in plastic especially if you want to go organic you know what i mean oh that's a real shame feck 
I really wanted some frogs toes every single week I eat this the Greek style organic luxury yogurt from Glenis it's my favorite brand I've got some organic oat milk for coffees and some Arzada goat's cheese from the cheese counter which I really like on sandwiches and stuff with like pesto and then big salad on the side I always tend to buy less animal protein but just better quality so I have organic Irish salmon darns here and then I have some free-range Irish chicken breasts as well some red pesto for my sandwiches and salads and things I kind of want to try this intenso pasta sauce because it has olives in it and I love olives. I usually always get the sun-dried tomato stir in because it's easy. Actually, yeah, I'll just get one of these as a safe backup. <laughs> Four cold tasties for me. For me? For we. Hey, witches and wizards, absolutely no casting of spells while shopping. Don't tell me what to do in management. Oh God, you love you, sir. You want to reach up there and get me one of those there lentil crisps, young sir? This one? Yeah, the red one. This one? The sweet chilli, yeah. There you are, miss. Mmm. Lots of options of pieces of chalk. Um, this is my favourite piece of chalk. This piece. <laughs> um, I really like this piece too. Yes, please. Because I've got peanut butter at home, I've got jam at home, I've got honey at home, I've got flaxseed at home, but loads of things for this. The last things I'm getting, because I have loads of stuff at home as well, um, is some gluten-free pasta by Barilla, they're a really good brand. And this soup is the nicest thing ever, isn't it? <laughs> There's a lot of sugar in it, but it's worth it. Trust me, this with like buttered gluten-free bread, very excelente. We're about to go to the gym, but I'm not sure we've said, but we're gonna have a big Halloween party. And um, we went and we got a load of Halloween decorations in this really cool Halloween shop in town. We're doing um, Phantom and Christine as our costumes. And if any of you are fans of Phantom of the Opera, you know that roses are quite important. So we got this really cool fake rose and it's black, black leaves. Curse you. You little, little lion, lion Delilah. Delilah. You little, little demon. demon. And it has glitter, it's dipped in glitter. It was really cool, it was only three euro as well. So we'll have the forever. And this is the thing, everything we bought, we're keeping these like packed away for every keeping Halloween. The boxes, keeping everything, keeping for them safe. For our future Halloweens in our future in home. In our future homes, yeah. yeah. So you can hand out the things. A little menu. A witch's way, little menu. I'm gonna try and make some cauldron cakes gonna look up a recipe online for cauldron cakes for the party. A bloody gauze tablecloth, which you probably could just make this yourself, to be honest. Um, but it was only seven euro, so we were just like, fuck it, we'll get it. I'm even afraid of this, and I hate, don't, Thomas, tell them how often I wake up thinking there's spiders in the bed. Yeah, you're very like, scared of spiders, but there's like two spiders hanging out in our bathroom and you don't mind them. Yeah, but that's because they're confined to their web and I know where they are. It's like the idea <laughs> of being in bed and feeling one crawling across me is horrible. So there's so many times in my dreams spiders just form. And this thing, his legs like are wire so you can mm -hmm. bend him, twist him around things. That was a bit pricey. Why did we spend 25 euro on a fucking... Well, our... <laughs> we basically... <laughs> There's no explanation. Because it's cool. This is the most expensive thing that we got. It's a pop-up coffin. It was 50 euro. We haven't even looked at that. We don't even know what it looks like. We're just going to assume it's really cool. Because look, see, there's supposed to be a little skeleton popping out. And it folds up and it folds for up. easy storage. Easy storage. For next year. My scary ghost friend. He's very Dementor-esque. Yeah, I wasn't very keen on this, but... Thomas wanted this, so I think it's pretty cool. Small. You you think a lot of things are cool. Yeah, that really sure, are cool. I sure do. Oh my, uh, my skull, my skull bunting. Skull bunting, yes, yeah, very, very pretty. Fancy, not very scary. I am excited to do the house up. You know that we're having it in Thomas's house. My house is very is probably the size of this bedroom, so uh, it's not going to work in my house, unfortunately. And his parents are cool with that. Yeah, uh, your little skull lights. Oh yeah, I love these. I'll probably keep these and use them in the backgrounds of videos. They're little uh, battery operated skull LED lights. Very small, very cheap. This is my favourite thing. It's for sticking into a pumpkin. 
to make it look like a cat <laughs> is inside the pumpkin. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> there's a tail and a head and you just stick them on. Your skull, uh, your skull rose thing. That's very nice. This is really pretty, yeah. Good quality. Very good quality. That will last. Plates for my cauldron cakes. <laughs> this is for like 30 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> for now, we have to go and do a bit of a workout. Um, I'm really moving up the weights. I'm really proud of myself. I'm I'm packing on a fair bit of uh, package. We have a new name for my bum. We're calling it Bundy. The Bundy. The Bundy, because it actually has a shape now, whereas it used to like be like a Bundy. Like a Bundy it used to be really flat. Uh, 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 no, no. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. No. I definitely wouldn't be able to work, but I I'm still happy with what I have. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hello there vlog. We're off again. We're off on the Irish travels and I have to show you this hotel room because it's possibly one of the most sexy hotel rooms I've ever stayed in. It's very Fifty Shades. Himself has just run to the shop for us but uh, I've brought him to Ten Square Hotel in Belfast. It is so so gorgeous and this time we're in the Jaffa Suite but just look at this view with me absorb this view with me because he's not here right now and I'm all alone on this big massive balcony but like Look, it's City Hall, bitches, looking really stunning. Look at that, this has such an amazing view of Belfast. Apparently a lot of people get their wedding photos taken up here. We'll probably have our breakfast out here in the morning if it doesn't rain, but I don't know. Oh, It's not even that windy. Um, anyway, gorgeous furniture in this room. Pretty flowers, pretty decor. It has this super big TV here and all these chairs and we're kind of keen to bring some friends back because we're about to go off to dinner with our friends Kaya and Jake and Lucy and I thought we could all come back here and watch a movie together. But yeah, this side of the room has the bed and then another. What, why, why is there two? But yeah, I have to do a little bit of writing now before we go out. I'm, I'm doing another article for the BBC. It's so cool getting paid by BBC to write. Before the fella comes back, I will just let you know a bit more about my outfit. This is a really old dress, so I got this about two years ago. I cannot for the life of me remember where, but it's basically an A-line dress and it buttons up up here. So it's one of those that cinches in at your waist, floofs out and it has this cool collar, so this makes it look a bit more dressy and uh, classy. I have my Mind Over Matter necklace from Carly Rowena's collection. This is a very me outfit. I feel very me today. If you do know what I mean by that, let me know below. Um, like if you guys have certain things that you put on and you're just like, yes, yes, this is, this is the one. He comes bearing gifts. Gluten-free crisps for me. Where did you get this brolly? Did they give it to you? No, it's mine. You brought a big massive brolly? It's, it's in the van, it's always in the van. Oh. In case oh. of rain emergency. This is in case of a hunger emergency. Oh, yeah. delicious. Thank you, and thank you for these batteries. The rom most romantic gifts ever. Yeah, batteries the, and, and crisps. And crisps and, and love. Look at these lamps, they're gorgeous. Look at the copper. They're really nice. I love lamps like that. The inside part is copper, so it's like reflecting beautiful copper light into the room. Copper light on City Hall as well. Very pretty. We're going to AMPM for dinner. This is a place that Lucy and I discovered. It's so good. It's my favorite place to eat now in Belfast. It's just so, so sexual. If fucking Brexit happens, there's gonna be a hard border and it's gonna make coming here a real pain in the fucking ass. Because everyone's gonna be bombing each other again. Like, Don't say that. that. I think I'm getting really nervous about it because every it's it's kind of bringing up a lot of old, I don't know, racist bullshit. It has gotten to the stage though where people say to me like, "Oh, be careful if you're going up north. You know, stick to the parts of Northern Ireland that like Catholics, even though I'm not a Catholic." You know, it's not that long ago that people were killing each other. Yeah, and it was like my mom grew up during all of that, and she says just the difference. Yeah, like it was still going on. Like when she was a teenager, that was like the height of it. Jesus Christ, we've made it. This place is fantastic. I got a salmon oh, yeah. and some kind of potato thingy. 
which I hope is nice, and some veggies. And then Tom's got this amazing pile of uh, sweet potato fries, which I'll definitely this be one portion. helping you with. Not one portion. Well, see, my potato thingy is tiny, so you may share. <laughs> We've come back to watch movies and like we're having little photo shoots outside because it looks so good. He's a model, Hang on, do, do, do it again, do it again, do it again. Go back, go back, go back. Interrupt the art. A jawline for days. <laughs> this isn't the day out I imagined. <laughs> I've climbed through some bushes because our vehicle has died on the road. We got into it and I saw a load of smoke coming out the back of it and I, I started freaking out a little bit and Tom was just like, oh it's fine, that always happens, it's an old man. But as we were on the main road there, he just stopped and we're both really sad. We called the van Walter after Walter White from what you can call it, break it bad because van is light and we always drive him around and we drive him to all the different counties around Ireland and he's sitting out on the road over there all alone and a tow truck is coming to get him. We've come to a place called Thunder Cat Alley for our food. It's cold. <laughs> a woman noticed we were looking at different restaurants to go and eat in and she just stopped us and she was like, they're all shit. Go to Thunder Cat Alley, that's meant to be the best. It's just next to the cinema. But uh, yes, we're going to see Doctor Sleep and we were invited by Warner Brothers. Um, it's a Stephen King adaptation, so it's like the sequel to The Shining. The Shining, do you remember that? It was <laughs> So are you a fan of Mr. Stephen King? I sure am. Oh yeah? I've read It, I've read Pet Cemetery. I've read The Shining, I'm reading Cujo. I don't like being in a hotel after the end of that movie. <laughs> I'm scared. What is it? Is that a person? I think it's you and McGregor. Oh no. What are you doing here, you? He's in the corner. Get him. He ran away. He went into that room. Oh no. Quick. <laughs> Yeah, we're just staying in the hotel kind of down the road from us just for a little <laughs> little night um, to get away. A romantic getaway. A romantic getaway. As you yeah. know, we still um, live with the fams. That film was brilliant. It was so good. It was really scary. But yeah. the story was just amazing. And I really want to read the book now. The villain is very, very, very sexy. Um, I'm not going to say much more about it, but do go see it if you like a good story and you like some scares. Um, the creepy old woman in the bath is probably going to haunt me tonight, though. I'm, I'm not even joking. I'm gonna end this vlog now because I am knackered. I went out to visit my mammy, my mammy there for a couple of days, and uh, I had been on Thomas's sleep schedule, like getting up at like four-ish in the morning and then in my mom's I was getting up closer to eight in the morning and I just feel really disorientated and crappy. I hate my sleep cycle changing a lot. Oh wait this isn't the end of the vlog because we're having a Halloween party. Yeah never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Do you like my big hair? I don't know how to tie this thing. Isn't this a vampire costume that you're just using yeah. with the mask? I have a bit of a phantom of the opera kink so I got Thomas that mask when I was in Venice earlier in the year and I got this costume somewhere random online. It's just so, like someone's old curtains and I've basically curled my hair. <laughs> Thank you.